In the wake of the Raptors' bad loss last night to the Memphis Grizzlies, the front office decided to waive Justin Champagny, who was enjoying a very good season in the G League. So in today's video, we're going to discuss, was this a harsh decision and why was Justin Champagny never given a chance for the NBA team? Let's get into it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Amateur Hour TV. This is the second channel in the Amateur Hour Production Network. And on this channel, we go through additional NBA-related content that I just don't really have enough time to go through on my main channel. So instead, we do so on this channel where the vibes can be different, a lot less professional, a little bit more of my personality shining through in the videos, but still the NBA and Raptors content that I hope you guys want to see. So if you enjoy what you see from today's video, please make sure you drop a like and support Amateur Hour TV by subscribing for more videos like this multiple times a week. But the video today is about Justin Champagny, who was waived yesterday, last night, late last night by the Toronto Raptors. And uh, I just remember, I, I was pretty down about the game. I was pretty down about the way it went down. The Raptors looked really bad all throughout the game. The Memphis Grizzlies just killed us all throughout the game. They were never uncomfortable, really. The Raptors made like a, a small little comeback but it was never any less than nine points so the Raptors looked bad but in the wake of that uh, a transaction right after the game Justin Champagny got waived by the Raptors and in the in the off sorry the preseason it came down between Justin Champagny and Justin Jackson seemingly on who would get the final roster spot and I was very adamant that it should be Justin Champagny I was very adamant that Justin Champagny is not only likely the better player of the two but much younger of the two, Justin Champagny is still uh, very early on his career here. He was born in 2001, so a very young player, and I felt like there was a lot of talent for the player. I thought he could have had an NBA role this season, at the worst, a very, very good G League season, which he was enjoying for the team, but I wanted him to get his opportunities because what Justin Champagny has showcased, even with a brief stint in the NBA last season with Raptors, he's a very good rebounder, very good, especially on the offensive glass. He reads rebounds very well, and he's an excellent shooter, and he was showcasing that big time for the Raptors 9-5 last season, and especially this season, but then the decision was made to waive the player, and again, very, very surprising to see that from a player who never even got an opportunity with the Raptors this season. And the reason that he was waived, and you know, we're going to talk about the bigger implications here. I want to get this out of the way first and foremost. It initially seemed like, okay, are we maybe freeing up a roster spot for somebody else? Are we freeing up a roster spot to make a trade? Is the Raptors finally going to pull the trigger on something? But then it was like, okay, his contract is guaranteed January 1st. The Raptors don't want to pay that guarantee, so they waived him. They can sign somebody else. Maybe they have their eyes on somebody. I would say don't read too much into this. This is just a player who's about to get a contract guaranteed. The Raptors saw really no future with the player, so decided not to lose any money there and cut ties with the player. Uh, whatever. I, uh, I don't think this is the right decision, though. Justin Champagny has showcased, uh, to me especially last season in the G League, he was too good for the G League. He played all his games in the G League this season, never got a chance with the Raptors this season, even had that Instagram story that said, free me after another very impressive G League performance. He's been excellent. He's been excellent in the G League this season. We go to what he's been doing. He's been shooting 49% from the field. He's been shooting 41% from three on 6.3 attempts per game, averaging 21 points over there, averaging 8.3 rebounds over there. Outstanding. In the playoffs last season, he was on fire. He only played two games in the playoffs. Raptors 9-5, only two games. I was at both of these games, by the way. 32.5 points, 48% from the field, 37% from three. Like, he was doing it all. You wanted him to slash to the rim and get you a bucket? He was doing that. You wanted him to step back for a three, create his own three-point shot? He was doing that. And he was hitting these shots extraordinarily efficiently. That was a big reason why I had my eyes on him in the, in the preseason. It was just unfortunate that he was injured. We didn't really get to see a lot of him. But I was adamant all throughout that this is a good player, a young player who has a future in the NBA. And the Raptors waving him, I think it's harsh. And I think this is the incorrect decision being deployed by the team. Justin Champagny has a lot of nice skills that you, you want in your role player. He's a fine defender. He's not that he's not great, but he's a fine defender. And like I said, the shooting, the three-point shooting, which 
really any team could use, especially the second worst three-point shooting team in the NBA in the Toronto Raptors. And the rebounding would be a nice addition to this team. The Raptors, who have had so many woes in the three-point shooting department this season, you, know, you have Wancho, who you signed to hit threes. He's doing other things okay, not in the last two games, that's for sure. He's not hitting his three-pointers. The Raptors, in general, struggling to hit shots. Here's a guy who's hitting threes at a consistent rate in your G League system, who has experience playing for your NBA team last season as well, and he looked good. He looked good in the rotation. People were calling him to get more minutes in the rotation last season. He kind of fell out of favor as guys came back from injury, as the Raptors went on that really good run post-New uh, post Year from January onwards, from like mid-December onwards. He fell out of rotation, ended up getting some time in the G League at the end of the season where he was exceptional, like I said, in those two playoff games. But this season, I don't know what's been the hesitancy to go to a player like this who you've seen do well in an NBA setting. Like, you know, he's not adding in the most amount of points per game. I'm not saying that. But I think he's gotten better as a shooter and could offer you more there. And he's still an excellent rebounder for your team. Like, I, I very much think this is a miss. I think that this is a miss from the Raptors front office. It wouldn't have been that expensive to guarantee his contract. And I think that there is a role for him somewhere in the NBA. I think another NBA team is going to take a big opportunity here to sign this player because... They're going to notice the talent. They're going to notice the potential that he has here. That Raptors fans, like every time I've seen him play, I've been impressed. Um, there's just a lot of different aspects of his game that are quite good that can be usable in a role player setting. I'm not saying he's going to be like an everyday, like sixth, seventh man here, but easily, easily, I'm seeing him as like a nine to 10, maybe even, you know, go as far as 11 to 12. I easily, easily see him as a top 12 player in somebody's NBA rotation. And I think he's going to do well in a setting like that when he's really provided an opportunity there. At the end of the day, from like a, being a fan of the player, I'm, I'm pretty happy for the individual, Justin Champagny, that he's going to go to a situation where maybe he will be considered for an NBA opportunity because he's been playing well enough in the G League to warrant those opportunities. A lot of times you see high volume scores in the G League that just aren't very efficient and don't really offer anything else. And, you know, when they get to an NBA setting where the ball is not in their hands constantly, they're not going to be the same player. But we've seen Justin Champagny as like a, a near elite rebounder for his size and position. And we've seen Justin Champagny as a good catch and shoot threat from the outside. This is a player who has the skills to be the best player on the court and the skills to be a complimentary role player. And somebody else is going to be able to use that. Now, I also want to touch on the Josh Jackson thing because people will people are still to this day saying we should have kept Josh Jackson. Okay. If the Raptors had signed Josh Jackson instead of Justin Champagne, I think we'd still be in the same spot where if he had a guarantee the Raptors would cut him. Just Josh Jackson would have gotten maybe like maybe some garbage time in the NBA. The Raptors would still be 15 and 20. Nothing would change having Josh Jackson instead of Justin Champagne. Like I can ab like I can almost absolutely guarantee that. There is no difference here whether you sign Josh Jackson or Justin Champagne. And I think the correct decision was made to take Justin Champagne and the G League statistics, which I was highlighting to you, definitely showcase that. Like 21 points per game on 49-41 shooting. That is very, very impressive. And another NBA team is going to recognize that Justin Champagne has a present, and definitely has a future in the NBA. I wanted both of those to be with the Toronto Raptors. The front office decided that was not the case. Look, I don't think this guy is going to light up the NBA, but without even giving this guy an opportunity to showcase his skills, I think this is a bit of a miss by the front office. We'll see down the line if it really is that costly. But thank you guys for tuning into this one on Amateur TV. If you guys did enjoy, please be sure to drop a like. It does go a long way to supporting the channel and Make sure you subscribe to Amateur Art TV for more videos and content just like this. Also, subscribe to my main channel, Amateur Art Sports. If you've not done that, we're on a road to 2,000 subs on this channel. We're on a road to 14,000 subs on my main channel. You can check out Raptors content in a more professional vibe and definitely uh, a little more, more editing goes into those ones. This one's just a fun channel for me to document my thoughts. Not a fun topic today, though. See you again next time for more from Amateur Art TV.